Okay, so um, we're still in biogen biogenic amines. We are still um, using things that are about the size of an amino acid and changing them just a little bit to use as a neurotransmitter. But um, all of these were derived from the amino acid um, tyrosine. And then this one, serotonin, our friend, is derived from a different amino acid called tryptophan. So we're going to talk about serotonin. So you don't have to know what tryptophan looks like, but here is tryptophan. Here is the process of forming serotonin. Um, the other name for serotonin is 5-hydroxytryptophan, 5-HT. Um, and um, so the terminology associated with it is you call either um, the receptors and the synapse if, for instance, this receptor, again, same one we keep looking at, this was a serotonin synapse. We would either call it serotoninergic or 5-HTergic, okay? So that is um, related to serotonin. So what does serotonin do? I mean, you, I know you've heard about serotonin. You've probably even fiddled with your own serotonin. So it does so much. It's, it's really used in a whole bunch of different places in the brain. Here are the serotonin pathways in the brain. Tons of them, all the way down to the brain stem and the cerebral cortex and the cerebellum, a whole bunch of different places in the brain. Um, to simplify what it does, and it's not very simple, it's used all over the brain, especially in the brain stem. It's usually inhibitory. It regulates sleep emotion, sensation, um, motor function, hunger, mood, sex drive, anxiety, obsession, compulsion, memory. If you have your serotonin out of whack, a lot of times it will manifest as either anxiety or depression, different in different sexes sometimes. Um, so um, a lot of the oldest ways to treat um, depression pharmacologically were with a category of drugs called selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSRIs. These are very, very commonly used as antidepressants and or anti-anxiety medications. They're not like a benzodiazepine anti-anxiety medication, but with chronic anxiety, sometimes people will use these as well. And this is just uh, even up to 2005. These are just some of the SSRI antidepressants and what they're actually approved for. Um, the older ones um, were less selective, and so there were more side effects, but they also tended to be effective in a broader group of people. The newer ones, as you get down to like the the least the latest developed ones, like Paxil and Lexapro and Celexa, those kinds of things, they're more selective, but they also don't work in as large a group of people. So um, interesting trying to get that actually right. Um, now, since um, serotonin has so much different functionality. The more selective you are, the better. Because, for instance, you could be trying to treat mood and end up um, impacting your sleep or impacting your hunger and gain 30 pounds or not be able to sleep or sleep all the time. Um, so there's a lot about treating depression in this text box in your, um, in your lecture text. But then... There's also some other drugs that are interesting that are serotoninergic drugs, and that is the category of drugs um, that are generally considered hallucinogens, which, by the way, are actually being used in clinical situations now. Um, LSD, which is lysergic acid, if you click here, it'll, a little two-minute video shows you how it works. Psilocybin, which is like a naturally derived um, hallucinogen. MDMA, which is um, ecstasy. Um, that um, those all act at serotonin synapses. And because serotonin has like sensory and motor function and mood function, you can, for instance, get hallucinations associated with this. So um, MDMA actually causes a massive dump of serotonin and then also inhibits reuptake of serotonin. So it makes portions of your brain, including your brainstem, feel like it's just flooded with serotonin. Um, we can talk in class about um, some clinical uses of MDMA and also some rumors that went around in the 80s and 90s about what MDMA did and didn't do to your brain. So we can talk about that. And then the last of the um, 
biogenic amines is just histamine. It's usually talked about as a paracrine agent, but they are finding out that histamine is also a CNS neurotransmitter. Um, and it may very well be very important, even though we don't know a whole lot about it right now, because it is a really active neurotransmitter in the hypothalamus, which is arguably pretty important for physiology.